Hey, hello everyone. You're welcome to Living Word Vlogs. This is the channel where we dispense the truths of God's Word through His ministers. We bring in to your viewing what Pastor Mensa Otabel said. Pastor Mensa Otabel is the founder of International Central Gospel Church, headquartered in Accra, Ghana. He's a very he's a motivational speaker. He's also a, a teleog he's, he's also a theologian and an entrepreneur. He talked about the power, the how your habits can make you or my you. How your habits can make you or my you. A lot of people have habits, but the thing about habits is that habit has a good side. It also has a bad side. There's a good habit. There's a bad habit. These are the things I talked about in this video today. And I would advise that you listen from the beginning to the end to pick actually what he actually meant by what habits are. He defined what habits are also. So in today's video, you are going to be able to know the part at which you are, whether you're having a good habit or a bad habit. Because most times we just feel that um, smoking or drinking are only bad habits whereas there are also bad habits also but in this video he talked expressly about what habits are and what are good and bad or bad habits if this is your first time on this channel kindly subscribe like and turn on the notification bell button share this video and as you listen you'll be blessed thank you and god bless you by their habits or their customs. Each one of us is ruled by our habits or our customs. Jesus and Paul had built spiritual habits that enabled them to do the will of God. And uh, sometimes we can also build habits that disadvantage us. So, Let's do some definitions. What is a habit or a custom? What is a habit or a custom? And I'm going to give you three indications of definition of a habit or a custom. The first is that a habit or a custom is a regular tendency or practice. It is the way you think. It is the way you do things. It's a regular tendency or a practice. For something to be a habit, there has to be regularity. It means that it happens over and over again. Secondly, a habit is something you are used to doing. It is not strange to you. It is familiar. You feel at home with it. As a matter of fact, many times you do it without being aware that you're doing it. A habit is something you're used to doing. Jesus went and preached because he was used to doing it. The same with Paul. And I don't think they gave it a second thought whether they should do it or not. It was just a regular part of their lives. They were used to doing it. Thirdly, a habit is an established pattern of behavior. It's an established pattern. It follows a certain pattern. There is a certain direction. There is a certain rhythm with which it happens in our lives. Now, these are nice, probably more sophisticated descriptions of uh, a pattern or def uh, of a habit. Uh, as, as a six year old boy was asked to define habit. And I like his definition more than the top three. And this is what a six year old boy said. He says, you keep doing it and you try to stop, but you can't. You keep doing it and you try to stop, but you can't. That's habit. 
So you ask yourself, is there something I keep doing and I try to stop and I can't? That's a habit. That's a habit. Our habits determine how we respond to things happening around us. The interesting thing is that we are not born with habits. We learn them and they become a part of our lives. We're not born with them. It's something you learned deliberately or not deliberately. Maybe you saw it happening in other people's lives and then you picked it up and it became a part of your life and, and, and you just go on doing it. But you're not born with it. Sociologists and some other experts tell us that approximately 90% of what we do every day is governed by the habits in our lives. Now that's serious. 90% of what we do is governed by our habits. In other words, you do about 90% of what you do every day, you do them without thinking. It's a habit. The, the, the effect is that we probably only consciously do 10% of the things we do. But the majority of what you do every day, you do them without thinking. They have become a habit. Habits are very, very powerful. Very powerful. Now, if 90% of what you do, you do them by habit, it means that much of your life is headed in a way that you have very little control over. So you can believe God for great things, but your habits can sabotage what you're believing God for. You can pray for something, but your habits can sabotage your prayer. Powerful concept, habits. Habits can be negative and they can be positive. And we all have them. Negative habits and positive habits. So what's a negative habit? Now you're going to find by their habits or their customs. Each one of us is ruled by our habits or our customs. Jesus and Paul had built spiritual habits that enabled them to do the will of God. And uh, sometimes we can also build habits that disadvantage us. So, let's do some definitions. What is a habit or a custom? What is a habit or a custom? And I'm going to give you three indications of definition of a habit or a custom. The first is that a habit or a custom is a regular tendency or practice. It is the way you think. It is the way you do things. It's a regular tendency or a practice. For something to be a habit, there has to be regularity. It means that it happens over and over again. Secondly, a habit is something you are used to doing. It is not strange to you. It is familiar. You feel at home with it. As a matter of fact, many times you do it without being aware that you're doing it. A habit is something you're used to doing. Jesus went and preached because he was used to doing it. The same with Paul. And I don't think they gave it a second thought whether they should do it or not. It was just a regular part of their lives. They were used to doing it. Thirdly, 
A habit is an established pattern of behavior. It's an established pattern. It follows a certain pattern. There is a certain direction. There is a certain rhythm with which it happens in our lives. Now these are nice, probably more sophisticated descriptions of uh, a pattern or the, uh, of a habit. Uh, a a, a six-year-old boy was asked to define habit. And I like his definition more than the top three. And this is what a six-year-old boy said. He says, you keep doing it and you try to stop, but you can't. You keep doing it and you try to stop, but you can't. That's habit. So you ask yourself, is there something I keep doing and I try to stop and I can't? That's a habit. That's a habit. Our habits determine how we respond to things happening around us. The interesting thing is that we are not born with habits. We learn them and they become a part of our lives. We're not born with them. It's something you learned deliberately or not deliberately. Maybe you saw it happening in other people's lives and then you picked it up and it became a part of your life and, and, and you just go on doing it. But you're not born with it. Sociologists and some other experts tell us that approximately 90% of what we do every day is governed by the habits in our lives. Now that's serious. 90% of what we do is governed by our habits. In other words, you do about 90% of what you do every day, you do them without thinking. It's a habit. The, the, the effect is that we probably only consciously do 10% of the things we do. But the majority of what you do every day, you do them Without thinking. They have become a habit. Habits are very, very powerful. Very powerful. Now if 90% of what you do, you do them by habit, it means that much of your life is headed in a way that you have very little control over. So you can believe God for great things, but your habits can sabotage what you're believing God for. You can pray for something, but your habits can sabotage your prayer. Powerful concept, habits. Habits can be negative and they can be positive. And we all have them. Negative habits... And positive habits. So what's a negative habit? Now you're going to find out whether you have a negative habit or not. Negative habit is something you find yourself doing even though it diminishes or destroys you. You find yourself doing it although it is destroying you. It is diminishing you. As a six-year-old said, you keep doing it, you try to stop, but you can't. It undermines your best efforts. It undermines your best intentions. Many of the difficulties we contend with in life are products of negative habits. The sad part of it is that many times we are not even aware we have those habits. Because it's your nature, it's second nature to you. So, a person can have a great desire to do something. But everything they do seems to contradict the great desire they have. Negative habit 
that diminishes you, sabotages you. It could be several things. And I know when we talk about habits, people are thinking of the big ones. You know, something like getting drunk. Yeah, that's a habit. Or smoking. Or being on drugs. Those are habits. And sometimes they are even more complicated because they become addictions. And I'm trusting God that by the end of this two-part message, addictions will be broken. Because sometimes a habit can create a chemical dependency. And that's what alcoholism is about. It's a chemical dependency. When somebody takes in alcohol for a very long time, the, the chemicals in the alcohol take charge of their body and control them. So it's no longer just a habit. Now there is a new dimension of chemical dependency. That's what happens when a person smokes. That's why a person can look at a, a box of cigarettes and see an advert on the box of cigarette that says smoking will kill you. It's right there in your face. It is not nuanced. It is not hidden. It's direct. Smoking will kill you. And yet he buys the cigarette. They are not stupid. They are not mad. But a habit, when it takes hold of you, and then if it is added by a chemical dependency... You need some extra help to break out of it. And I'm trusting God, help will come to you if you are desiring freedom. And you will break out of that. Negative habit is something you do routinely. uh, Something you do. It diminishes you, but you can't stop it. What is a positive habit? A positive habit is something you do routinely that enables you to live a more productive life. A positive habit is empowering. It supports your best intentions and helps you to achieve your objectives in life. Somebody has said that a habit is a useful servant but a dangerous master. There are people who are habitually successful. And there are people who are habitually unsuccessful. Have you found people who almost everything they do succeeds? They start a business, it works. They start another business, it works. It looks like their life is, is everything is, is happening well for them. And sometimes we look at them and we say, you are lucky. It's not luck. Most of those people have built positive habits. Sometimes they are not even aware they have built those habits because probably they were introduced to those habits unconsciously, either by their parents or by a friend or by an association or by a certain situation. And they built these habits into them so automatically they produce success. And almost it seems as if everything they do seems to work. It's not luck. Most of it is habits because 90% of what you're doing is habit directed. And yet you also find people who sometimes it seems as if nothing works for them. And we may think it's, 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 a, it's a, a, a spiritual, and yet there may be a spiritual dimension to it. But we also have to examine the habits. Now because much of our lives are driven by habits and because most times we are not conscious of our habits, we don't even know the things that sabotage us. And we keep producing them over and over again. There is a story in the book of Daniel that we're going to read very soon. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. It's about Daniel, and uh, most of you have read about Daniel in the Bible. And when we think about Daniel, we think about Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel was uh, a young Jewish man 
who was carried into captivity from Judah under the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel was selected in the Babylonian kingdom and he was trained with some of his friends and he became a very high public official. He ended up serving under about four different kings. One of the kings he served under as in the, in, was King Darius of the Medes, the Persian king. And Darius loved Daniel very much because Daniel was a very trusted public servant, a great advisor, and a man whose wisdom was very useful to the king. As you know, when you are that good, people are going to plan your downfall. So some of the other staff members in the court of King Darius planned a scheme to get rid of Daniel. And so they came to the king, King Darius, and said, Oh king, you are a great king. You know, sycophants always hang around kings. Uh, and, and pumped his head about his greatness and said, we, we want you to sign a law to test the loyalty of all the people in your kingdom, particularly the people you work with. That for the next 30 days, nobody should pray to any god or to any man except to you. If anybody has a need, they should come and talk to you and not pray to any, any, any other deity. And the king, you know, most kings uh, sometimes have insecurity issues. So he signed the law. The law of the Medes and the Persians were very powerful laws. Because when you sign those laws, you can't change them. You can't revise them. They are signed and that's it. And King Darius signed the law. Now he didn't know that it was a scheme to get rid of Daniel. Because the other people had noticed that Daniel had a habit. And they were now going to use his habit to destroy him. And his habit was that he prayed at certain times predictably. No matter what happened, Daniel was going to pray. And now they're going to use his habit to destroy him. So the king signs this law. I want you to read Daniel chapter 6. Verse 10. And it's going to read, show us some very important things about habits. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. Follow that carefully. He knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem... He knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. Note that phrase, as was his custom. It was a habit. And the Bible says that he knew the law had been signed. He knew the consequences of that law. He knew the law of the Medes and the Persians could never be changed and altered or revoked. He knew that it meant he could die. But he couldn't change his habits. It tells you the power of habits. Three things about habits we learn from Daniel is that habits do not hide. Habits do not hide. Even when you are at risk, your habits will reveal themselves. Daniel was one of the first people who knew that the law had been signed. He knew the consequences, and yet he couldn't change his habit. It wasn't just that he was against the king, or he was rebellious against the king, or he was fighting the king. His habit couldn't hide. And that's one of the things you're going to note about habits, that they won't hide. Even when you are at risk, it will show up. That's why sometimes you can find a person whose marriage is being destroyed. 
And they know the marriage is at risk, but the habits destroying the marriage can't hide. They pray about it, they go for counseling, they do everything possible, but habits don't hide, even when there is a risk involved. They're very powerful things. Very powerful things. The second thing we learn about habits from Daniel is that your habits decide your responses to challenges. When you are faced with a situation, you will respond according to your habits. If Daniel did not have any habit of prayer, he would just have laid low for the next 30 days and he'll be fine. If he didn't have any habit of prayer, that threat, that challenge would be meaningless to him. But he had this habit. And when he's faced with a challenge, his habit is his first response. And I like how the passage puts it. He says he knew that the king had signed it. He went home, climbed upstairs to the upper room, opened the window, faced Jerusalem and prayed three times. It's almost like, are you crazy, Mr. Daniel? Don't you just know what you're doing can ruin your career, ruin your life, put everybody in danger? But when you are faced with a challenge, you don't respond with intelligence. You respond with habit. Powerful. And the third thing we learn about habit from Daniel is that your habits determine the outcomes of your life. Your habits determine the outcome of your life. For Daniel, his habits led him into the lion's den. The habits led him into the lion's den, his prayer habit. But that was not the end of the story. The same habit that led him into trouble was the habit that got him out. Because in the morning when King Darius came looking for Daniel, King Darius said in verse 19 and 20 of Daniel chapter 60, chapter 6, he says, Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? In other words, your habits which got you into trouble, have they been able to deliver you? Daniel served God habitually. The habits exposed him to danger, but the habits also delivered him from danger. It determines the outcome of your life. Your habits can put you in a lion's den. But if it's not a good habit, the lions will eat you. But if it's a good habit, it will expose you to danger, but it will deliver you from danger. It's like somebody who says, has a habit of honesty, integrity, doesn't take a bribe. People can set him up, but the same habit will deliver him. Your habits determine the outcome of your life before you blame a witch before you blame your husband before you blame your wife before you blame somebody else for your problems look at the 90 percent of your habits and see whether where you are is where your habits have brought you what habits have you acquired over time what habits guide your life what habits lead you welcome back everyone i'm sure you were blessed by that powerful message that pastor mensa lotabel talked about where he talked about habits you know praying every time like he talked about in the case of daniel can be a very good habit 
Daniel, the kind of Abi Daniel out towards prayer, was the one that looked as if it was going to destroy him in the beginning. But on the later on, it vindicated him and it brought him out of troubles because he saw that habit was something he could not do about. He could not do away about. You understand? So having a good habit is a very good thing, such as praying, winning souls doing what is right at all times according to the leading of the Holy Spirit and doing according to what God has led you to do or God or what God is leading you to do part time. So when you cultivate that kind of habit, it helps you to be able to, to go far in life, to be able to become a better person in the society. So even as you inculcate the habit of doing, doing good, doing things that pertains to life and godliness, May your life not remain the same again. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Kind of like this video, share and subscribe. Thanks for now. God bless you and bye.